Oh, hi there, cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to another fantastic show here on Crafters TV. It is, if you didn't know already by the music, time for uh, an incredible masterclass. And in this masterclass, we're featuring all things Sarah's signature. Sarah's signature collection is like the one thing I think we get most excited about here at Crafters TV when they're launched. You guys absolutely love them. So many of you are avid collectors of them because it means that you've got a whole selection of glorious crafting goodies that you know are going to work seamlessly and perfectly together whilst at the same time 
time being able to take individual elements away uh, and use them independently. Now, I'm not on my own for the next two hours. Uh, Corian is back with me. Yes. Day three of us know, two, isn't it? I know, it? I'm These still here, people. sorry. <laughs> I know, we're still here. We're still, still here, but we've got something really, really special. We're going to go through all of Sarah's signature collections. We've got the dragonflies, the butterflies, we've got Country Lane, we've got Garden Party, and then we've got those fantastic boxes. So we have so much to share with you. It's really, really exciting. Yeah, it really is. Lots coming up, uh, lots of demonstrations, lots of projects. Oh, uh, you're going to give us a taste, a flavour, some inspiration, Corinne, so what we're going to be seeing over the next couple of hours. Right, I'll show you a few bits from the garden party first. So first of all, this is the garden party, because this is what we're going to um, demonstrate first. So I'll show you each one as we go along. So this is the garden party. So you've got these lovely balloons. You get your sentiment. We're going to make a rosette as well. Um, absolutely, you've got your stamps that are going to create your ball. Orders. You've got stamps and dies to cut out this gorgeous birdcage. Look at this, look at this stamp here to create this lace effect. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? We've got the pennant, and there we go. We're going to use that. We've got these sentiments. Now look at this. This is beautiful. This is a 3D embossing folder. That just looks like it's popping off the page, doesn't it? absolutely gorgeous so this is the garden party collection which i think is probably quite apt for this week isn't absolutely it? yeah I think you couldn't get more apt this week here in the uk than a good old-fashioned garden party yeah absolutely I think we all love one of those really beautiful and it's a great collection i'm going to mention the garden party first off straight off the bat actually because the deal you've got on it is well, it's amazeballs, really, because uh, you are... Well, if you're a Platinum member, just put it into context, you're paying for these two items I'm about to share with you and getting the other 13 elements totally free of charge. You've got 75% saving here on this. 70%, sorry, saving here on this, which is excellent. So you've got your vintage bird cage, which is this one here, and you've also got the dainty lace in here as well. Let me show you. So that's, that's the value taken care of. They're $14.99 each, those two items. Let me share with you the rest of what you're getting included then. So you, you're also going to get this. This is the beautiful rosette. This looks brilliant, made out of loads of different things. Try using um, any of your pattern papers, newspapers, all sorts of things you can use this for. Really versatile die, that one. You've then got your embossing folder. So you're going to get the vintage parasol. You have also got in here the towering teacups that you can see just there. These are your stencils. So you've got delicate doilies in this particular one and you're going to receive the traditional lace as well. The stamps are super versatile. Any kind of invitations that you might want to put together, these are going to work beautifully on that. You've got to celebrate summer, party, birthday, a whole host uh, of different um, stamps in there. Then you've got some layering stamps. These are the floral laying, layering stamps of the summertime floors, we're calling those. This here is your summertime pennant, which is that one. There are lots of little embellishing stamps, as well as the ability to create glorious bunting using that. These are the delicate roses, like a creator card. Think about snipping some of that detail away. Then you also have this one just here. This is your whimsical balloons. Uh, really beautiful. Play around with that leading edge as well. That leading edge on there, this detail here cuts in, and then this detailing here, uh, sorry, this detailing cuts out, but then you've got the leading edge, which also cuts out. So you can really customise that to whatever you fancy. You've then got the ornate lace in there. And last but by no means least, you've also got your different sentiments. 38.05 or 48.67 saves you almost £90, almost $115 there. Um, it was very busy in our earlier Wake Up Call show. Unsurprisingly, the perfect collection for summer also. So definitely snap that up. We're going to move on, though, and we're going to have a little look at what What's going to be Corinne's first demonstration uh, is, of course, the country lane that we're going to take a look at. Uh, this one here is beautiful. It's like, it's like, well, I won't tell you what Corinne said earlier about it, uh, but it's like a sort of lovely, it's like a lovely summer's, it's like a Sunday summer's, su su oh, try that again. It's like a summer Sunday in the countryside, isn't it? <laughs> Um, as well. So a 12 by 12 paper pad you're getting in here first, which is awesome. Uh, lots of really lovely florals. And the great thing about florals, Corinne, they're just never going to go out of fashion. It's a timeless one, this, isn't it? It certainly is. 
absolutely time. So you're going to be able to use it on all your different projects. Even if you're taking it away from the rest of the products within this bundle, you're going to be able to use it. You know, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. Really? I love that one with the border on the bottom because you can just use little elements of it. Really, really beautiful. So you've got that in there. You're also going to get it as well in, let me try and find it for you, the 6x6. Six six. The 6x6 six six is resized as well. So you can see yes. you've got the same designs, but they are shrunk down. I thought at first it was just like a quarter of the 12x12, no, 12 12, yeah, but it's not. It's all completely resized so completely it's really great resized. to have both of those you then getting the luxury cardstock in here it's a linen effect cardstock which just fits really beautifully uh, with the whole collection you've also got the vellums in here now there's something about the vellums when they're done in the florals they just look absolutely stunning let me get these right way around for you so i can show you again really lovely wonderful for adding texture to your projects really good heavy duty vellum really lovely opacity to it as well so you've got that one uh, coming included in there then we've also got this one just here uh, which is your foam your flower forming foam and we've also got the country lane in there as well, 100, uh, which is that one there. You've got your stamens in there. Uh, we've then got in here as well all of your hardware. So you so, so much in here in this one. Tusk till pawn, which is that first one there. You've then got your elegant lace. You've got the ribbon in here. You've got edgeables as well. So you've got country lace. You've also got your uh, swirled butterflies. It can't have too many butterflies, let's face it. You've got the lace frame. You're also going to get light up the lane, which is that one there. This one is your hanging sign and vines. There's lots in here you're going to be able to really create lots of scenes with. You've got the cottage window. You've also got your garden gateway. These are great for scene buildings. This is the idyllic meadow. They're all separate, those stamps. You've got the grand oak. You'll also get your cut and emboss folder, which is the opening gate, which is rather fabulous. Gateway to the country. You've got your perfect peony in here too. Think about using this for foam. You can also use it with your papers, if you wish. You've got perennials in pots. And you've also got Live, Love, Grow in there too with all those different sentiments. So you want to go for that 155.80 or 197.90, saving you over 50 pounds or over 66 dollars, which is rather marvellous. If you want to get in touch, you can do so in all the normal ways. Crafters TV over on Facebook, Crafters Companion over on YouTube. Please don't forget as well about the Memorial Day sale, which is taking place over on the website. Up to 75% off selected items until the end of tomorrow. So make sure you are checking that out. We've also got the Best of Craft Awards as well. I'll tell you more about that as we go through the show. You've got the opportunity to go and nominate us in a whole host of different categories. Right, where would you like to start then, Corinne? Right, I'm going to start with the pendant. So we're going to cut out this. Now, this is really clever. So what you've got is... Oh, if I can get this off of here. You've got your lovely pendant. So this is going to be perfect if you're going to be making bunting. You know, you can be using this. And you can even cut fabric out with this. And I'm going to cut that out of my lovely yellow. So I can run that through. Let me just get a piece of tape and then we can take that down now this does this is going to cut out a solid layer so there's no cutting edge on the inside so that'll cut out a solid layer on there let me put this that way around there we go there we are that'll go through a bit easier then we can run that through because it's a small one we can just do it through our small machine now what you also get is you get the second layer of your pendant in this so I've got the green in there as well so I'm going to cut that one out so let's take this one out so look at this oh look at all the little bits look at how brilliantly that has cut I always surprise it I don't know why I'm always surprised but sometimes when a die cuts so well it always I always get you know pleasantly surprised but I should know by now shouldn't I that they will they will always do it well but sometimes it's still a shock when it it does it so beautifully so we can then cut the next layer so this is your matte layer that's going to go on top and we can take that through. Let's get all the bits out of there. This, again, lots of elements in this collection that you'll use uh, across lots of different things. I'm thinking for, like, new babies, birthday parties. The bunting ones are so handy, aren't they? We've oh. got theming them in this style, or you're using them with some other collections. You certainly can. I mean, yes, this is what I think you have to remember, is what you've got in each collection. But look at that. Look at how that fits absolutely perfectly on there. Now, the other thing that I've already done a little bit of cutting out, otherwise I'd be stood here cutting. There we go, that's going on there all day. So I can show you what else I have cut out. Now, using this um, edge, now mine's not in a packet. Can you remember what it was called? The 
the edger one uh dainty lace dainty lace thank you so i've cut that twice out of the same sort of lovely um sort of reminds me of a corn flour not corn not corn flour um like wheaty colour yeah yellow. Nice. it's lovely isn't it so I've cut those out I've also cut out the sentiment the party and I love that you get the matte layer as well as the detail but look at that isn't that so detailed it looks absolutely perfect so the other bit that I have done is I have gone ahead and I have stamped with a couple oops, of these stamps. So we've got the parasol and we've got parasol even, not parasol, par parasol, and also the gorgeous lace. So these are just being um, stamped from the from here. Actually, that one doesn't fit on that one. I've cut this one at the parasol. So you get... You'd need more than a parasol out there today. Honestly, it Ooh. just absolutely tipped it down, didn't it? It was it's, biblical. It certainly was. It was... I was wondering how we were going to do this show because it was so loud. So loud, loud on the ceiling. So loud on the it's um, now. on the roof just above we'll us. We'll have to get the canoe out to get home. I think it carries <laughs> on today. So we can cut that one through, and I've also cut out the lace. But we're not going to use all of that lace, and I'll show you what we're going to do in just one minute. So we can take that. But just to show you, if you're not into fussy cutting your um, stamp images out, this is perfect because they're going to give you not only the stamp but we're also going to give you the fantastic die to cut it out as well so that works really really lovely so let's put that to one side what else have i got so i've cut that one out already so let's show you how i would use that so i'm going to take that i'm going to pop you definitely it definitely need your bumper shoot if you were out there today oh, wouldn't you? certainly would Gosh. certainly would it'd be now, inside out <laughs> i'd have blown away being a bit mary poppins esque wouldn't mm. it right let's line that up so it looks we can position it nicely. Actually, I'm going to pop this on here, the tape on here, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up. Where am I? I'm not lining that up. So that wants to go in the middle. Where? There, that looks about even. Would help if I put it over the edge. Come on, Corinne, think it through. Line it up. Try that again. I want it over that edge there that's better there we go and then all i'm going to do is turn it over and trim along there and i'm going to use that die cut to act as the place to cut so all i do is put my scissors up to the die cut and then it's cut so i've got this lovely image on here and that can then come on to the next level so we'll pop that on there so that's my pennant prepared so I've got my pennant ready I have got my party ready and I've got two of my sort of swags so the next thing I need to do is I want to make a row oh, and I've got my parasol so we're building up all our bits before we start sticking and the next thing I want to do is do my make my rosette so it know. says on here it says very clearly that what you need to do is cut four strips together to create one long piece and then concertina fold them but I actually find it easier to concertina first so just a few minutes ago I just started to concertina two up so all you do is just go along backwards and forwards now as I was saying earlier about another one another completely different die that puts score lines in if you find that your die cutting machine isn't putting in good enough score lines all you need to do is run it through your die cutting machine the second time because the first time is going to concentrate on the cutting and the second time will concentrate more on the scoring perfect so it's just just to you know some people say that it doesn't always score perfectly first time so that's the third one and then I've got the fourth one now I find a hot glue gun is the best way to create a rosette because I find if, you, if you've got a wet glue it will because if you think about it it's going to try and push itself of out course. so if you've got um, some hot glue it's going to hold it um, best for you so what we can do just finish concertina in this these, this again, the, the, the rosette die, so versatile. Again, something oh. you're going to be able to take into all your different collections. Great way, I bet vellum rosettes would look lovely. <gasps> yes, I think I've made vellum mm. rosettes. I'm sure I've made a vellum rosette once. I think a lot of people really love vellum, but I know some of our crafters struggle with ideas on how to use it. Making rosettes out of it would be glorious. Be gorgeous, wouldn't it? So now all I need to do is link them together just 
like that so that we've got one long bit so what I'm going to do is put so just use so don't go more than what don't overlap by more than one fold if you just do it by one fold you're going to get the perfect length it's all been worked out so that it fits so put the first one in just press it together then I can put tape on the second one and then put that one in there there we go and the third one and then what, once you've got your three and um, your four all in a line what we're then going to do oops catch it in the right place once you've got all four in a line there we go you can just make sure everything is still concertina the right way up we haven't overlapped so i've got all four make sure they're nicely and then i'm just going to put some tape on yep it's working just right put it on that bit put some tape on here and this will then join up to there there we go so we've now got a disc or circle. circle right so what you need to do this is where your hot glue gun is really helpful so also in the die you get two little you get a, a circle die so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and then all you need to do is just press into the middle can you see and it will just flatten. simple isn't it? it looks like a ring of pineapple yeah, which you, you like with your gammon uh corin it'd be perfect for my gammon because i'm not <laughs> having an egg on mine <laughs> there we go right so there, can you see it's really really easy all you do is just bring it together and it will go there so what i need to do is nice bit of hot glue it's amazing how our conversations carry on all weekend. Yeah, I mean, if you Gammon were doing this on a Monday, you're probably thinking, what on earth are you talking about? We, uh, I, I, there was a very surprising, very surprising revelation about Corinne uh, yesterday. Uh, oh, yesterday, the day before, I can't remember. I can't remember. Corinne Just that condones there. the use of pineapple on no. pizza. Oh, I, yes, I could. Yeah, yes, I and think I, you think you know someone, and then all of a sudden you get a fact, and you just, you know, you question whether you really knew them at all. <laughs> and, and... I do not like fried egg on my gammon. No fried egg no on fried egg on my gammon. gammon. Right, only that pineapple. Will actually, hold. But what I'm actually going to do, just to reinforce it, is I'm going to hold it in place, fill that with a bit of glue. No, there is no place for a fried egg on gammon. There really is. It's, it's practically bacon. Uh, lots of people tuning in saying hello. Anna's in Texas. Rhonda's in New Orleans. Georgianne's in Clearwater. Perfect, is that? Uh, Deb's in Virginia and Linda is in South Bend, which is in mm, IN. IN. Illinois. No, it's not Illinois, is it? Indiana. Indiana, of course it is. What a Wally. Right, okay. So now I've got all my component parts put together, oh, made, so I can now put it together. So I'm going to make this into a tentfold card now this could be perfect as i say you've got your garden parties you've got your summer birthdays you could even make this as a celebration for a wedding you know your invitations so i'm going to use that gorgeous gorgeous pattern paper so there we go we can come all the way around there and we've got that beautiful bird cage in the corner so i'm just going to pop that and if you wanted to you could even ink the edges to get even more of a beautiful effect there we are and then i'm going to come in with my beautiful um, edges and then we're going to put that onto here and then we can just come through there and grab those there we are just one make sure I've got right to the end just put that to one side for a minute and do the second What is gammon? asks uh, Diane K. Lewis. Will it be called, is it called like a bacon steak in the US? Is that a thing in the US? I don't know. Gammon, it's, or is it ham? Does she know what gammon is? Is it just a type like ham? Um, yeah, it's like sort of ham, it's like, it's, it's like a bacon chop almost. Yeah. Is that what it's called in the States? I'm not sure. Right, I'm gonna line that up nice and evenly. It's just overhanging my card very slightly. So I'm gonna pop that on, just make sure it's lined up and it's even right to the edge. And then again, I can turn this over and just trim off any excess. It's often easier to do it after you stuck it down 
because you can just see where to go just there and finally just there there we go how our social media superstar that? Rachel would happily share your pizza with you if it's got pineapple on it, Corin. She's saying. And and what else has it got to have? Can you remember? Gilmore likes pineapple with bacon and ham, uh, like and with chili flakes on it as well. Ooh. Pineapple and chili flakes, interesting. Your your your, your pizza with pineapple on has also got to have. If you remember, it's got to have barbecue sauce underneath. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! No no no! no. A barbecue base. No, we we decide we discovered I don't like sweet and savoury together at all. Uh, oh, Rachel says barbecue based sauce. I was listening, uh, which you is see? amazing. There you are. Right, and I'm good. Right now, your pennant could come this way down, but we're going to put it here, and we're going to actually break the edges of the card because you know how I love going over the border. So I put my foam pads to there, so I've got a little bit of uh, my pennant that I can actually hang over the edge of the card because I just think it always makes for a little bit more interesting then we can come in with our party and we can put this on and the great thing about um, using your tape runners is you can go around corners as well so we can put that in the center that's going to go just there then I'm going to come in with my parasol so I'm going to actually just use oh I've got some got some let's make sure I've got it's that one it's going to come just down here here so I'm just going to put flat down there oh, just for quick I'm going to put that bit on there and I'm going to put a little bit on there there we go then we can take that off and that we can just put coming down the edge and then finally I've just kept my hot got glue gun out I love this is so robust it's not flimsy at all that you can see it's really really robust so it's you know it's, it's not going to get damaged in transit on your card and then we can pop that just there I'm just making sure that's stuck down and that is one way just keeping those colors really simple oops it hasn't stuck down yet I'm just going to hold my hand on it while that hot glue sets but how about that a beautiful way to use your um, garden party Really, really stunning. And what a brilliant deal uh, you have got. It's called a ham steak in the US. All right. A ham steak is what we are calling it. Uh, very, very busy on this at the moment. Lots more of you saying hello as well. Tanara Washington is saying good morning from Illinois. Now, that's got the, uh, the possibility to be confusing, isn't it? Uh, Alice is in from Wisconsin. Fans in Maryland. Laurie's in Wisconsin as well. Uh, Betty is saying hi from Houston, Texas. Can't wait to see the demos today. And Shadai is saying good Good morning, Rebel Joe and Corin. Just came home from a night shift. Hope to join you soon. I hope you can as well. A lot of love for all things garden party. Rosalind uh, is loving the garden party. Uh, who else we got uh, here? There's a lot of lot. Just mostly talk about pineapple, really, in the comments. To be honest, Maris says hi from California. Love pineapple on pizza. I have no idea what gammon is. Uh, there you go. It is a ham steak. Let me recap then what you're going to get in here. Remember, you've got the value. If you're a platinum member, you're paying for these two sets of stamps and dies, and you're getting the rest. Uh, absolutely free which is amazing so you've got the vintage bird cage you've got that dainty lace this is the beautiful rosette that you saw Corin using you've then got vintage parasols your towering teacups they're your two embossing folders you've got the stencils in here that's your delicate doilies and your traditional lace your stamps in there these stamps are so versatile you'll be able to use them across loads of different things these are the summertime florals you've then got the summertime pennant delicate roses those two beautiful edge balls i absolutely love that color combo that's been used on these boards i think it's really cool and then also your die cut sentiments and they've got the matte layer on there as well which is excellent 3044 or 3894 if you're a platinum member and then we're going to go to country lane i'm going to whiz you through again exactly what you are getting in here let's start off with the hardware this time uh really lovely selection a big big collection this the reason this collection is so big you know sarah always starts with quite large collections and then trims them down but occasionally we have a collection come along where Sarah just loves most of it and it ends up being one of these big bumper collections that's what you've got here you've got the elegant lace so you also have the amazing ribbons in there so pretty this edgeable here it's got a it's got so much intricate detailing on there when you see that when you get it at home this one is your swirled butterflies uh, then we also have the lace frame you will also receive this one this is your light up the lane 
You saw Corinne demo with this a little bit earlier. This is the Hang Sign and Vines. This one makes me want to go on holiday to Tuscany and I don't know why. It's your cottage window. It's going to work excellently with your garden gate, which is that one there. We talked a lot about building scenes with this. This is the idyllic meadow that you've got, like your little farmyard stamps here. Love that nice big tree. It's going to work really well in the foreground uh, or in the background even, especially if you've got things like masking fluid that will go with that. This is your grand oak. That's a really, the emboss on that is absolutely amazing. This one here is a cut and emboss folder. So that is your garden gate that you've got there. We're calling it the gateway to the country. Then you've got your perfect peony in there. So much of it, I've got, a, I've got a job to contain it all on the counter. This one here, next one is your perennials in pots. And then you've got your uh, live, love, grow there. It's all your different sentiments. Happiness is time spent with good friends. I love that one. Let's move into the paper elements that you've got then because they are gorgeous and they're so, so beautifully summery. We'll start with the foam. So you've got the flower forming foam, which is excellent. It's really lovely when we do these kind of signature collections and include the foam. So those of you that love making flowers, you're going to adore it. Maybe you've not tried flowers before. Maybe um, flower making isn't in your crafty arsenal at the moment, then you're going to be able to use these to practice with that. I would definitely recommend going back to Corinne's flower forming masterclass from... Saturday. Saturday, Corinne? Was it Saturday? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. I know, it's, they all blend into one, don't they? This one here is your 12 by 12s. Let me flick through this for you and you get a good idea of the real overall theme that you're going to be able to achieve. All very timeless, gorgeous, delicate florals. Quite a little bit of a painterly vibe to it. It's a little bit watercolour uh, in some places in style too. You, they're double-sided as well, so you know that the back side is going to work uh, completely well with the uh, focal imagery uh, on the front of there as well. We then have your luxury cardstock, which is this one just here. You will get the 12 by 12 resized into the 6 by 6 and then you'll also get these beautiful vellums and they really are stunning. Let me just share these with you because you're gonna love these. They come in a little wallet as well, so you must keep them all nice and um, all nice and neat. I always struggle with these, don't I? Here we go, that's better. So you can see there some of the beautiful designs that you've got. Again, they match wonderfully with the um, papers, which is brilliant, so you know it's all gonna to work together. All of that should be 260, sorry, 207 pounds or 263 dollars. It's a big, big collection, this one. Uh, 155.80 or 197.90 is what you are looking at when you've got that brilliant saving there of over 50 pounds or 65 dollars. You'll see the platinum price on the screen there. Of course, you're all going to be able to avail of your club inspired discount. Any questions you've got, please get them into me. Uh, Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion, if you are over on YouTube. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Pineapple does not belong on pizza, says Alison. Traditional only. I'm with you. I actually belong to an Instagram page, Corinne, called Pizza Activism and they are campaigning to get pineapple banned on pizza. Well, I don't know if we can Yeah, if you friends. go to Italy, you know, and you ask for pineapple on pizza, they will deport you, just to warn you. So when you're there, be I, careful if you're going. I don't think we can be friends. It's, I, I will have to convert you and show you the error of your way. Maybe. maybe highly unlikely, but maybe. <laughs> uh, good excuse to eat pizza. More pizza, the better, I say. Um, any questions you've got, get them into me. But I know we're going to have a look at Country Lane now. It's we a beautiful one, this, isn't it? Are. It is the most gorgeous, gorgeous collection. And like you say, there are so many elements that you can can do so much with so we're going to start off using the lace frame and I was going to cut it out afterwards but then I realized I've got this gorgeous linen effect card and I've got a little space down there so I thought I would cut out the swir one of the swirled butterflies from there now it's a large collection but I'm actually only going to really be using apart from the paper pads three sort of pieces of my hardware mm. you know you don't have to you don't have to try and shoehorn every little bit of it into each each project that you make you know just pick pick the bits that you like and mix and match them around so I can pop this one on just here there we go so that's my frame and then just down here is my butterfly as well and then we can run that through now this swirled frame you've got that outside piece and then you've got all of these mats and layers as well. 
so that is going to really you know cut everything out but what I've also done is I've also cut out just a few ovals from my oval dies just to add in a few extra layers but I'll show you where we're going from that in a minute so we can cut out that one there we go let's bring this one in oh there we are so you've got this gorgeous gorgeous frame let's get all the bits out there we are isn't that beautiful so so pretty and I've also got my butterfly now I'm just going to get my frame and we're going to run it back through again but this time on white Thank you, Doug. so we can do the same on there oh I've still got some bits in come on it is worth taking a minute just to get the little bits out of your die because it's just going to enable your die to cut better every time now can I fit my butterfly on there or have I trimmed it let's see if we can move that up there we go this is when you want to definitely tape them down so they don't cross over dies will last a lifetime so long as you don't put two dies on top of each other in your die cutting machine because the pressure is so immense that the one die will cut into your second die and you really really don't want that to happen so just a little piece of low tap tape and then you can get two dies through your die cutting machine at the same time so I've got my butterfly in white and I've got my butterfly in blue I've got my frame oh there it is I've got my frame in blue let's put that one back on there and also my frame in white you can see and I'm making lots and lots of mess we'll clear that up at the end there we go just poke those out all the way out of there out it comes get those last pieces there we go all the way so now I've got my frame in blue and my frame in white what I'm going to also do is while we're here I'm also going to cut the frame again the next layer out of the pattern paper so that's going to come out just there what did I do with that tape it's gone don't know where that went on there and then we can cut that through as well there we Laura go. Gray speaking my language she says uh uh, not traditional pizza with pineapple on. She says white pizza with olive oil, fresh tomato, roasted garlic, and broccoli is delicious, especially oh. in the summertime. Yes, please. Ding dong. Uh, Maricel says one of the best pizzas I've eaten had a garlic cream base, pineapple, and crumbled bacon. Cream and pineapple together. Ooh, almost bordering on a pina colada, isn't it? <laughs> like a garlicky pina colada. Yeah. I like how your mind works straight away. First thing you thought there was, ooh, pina colada. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> never drink a pina colada unless you're on holiday. I don't know why. I never, I've only ever had one when I've been away on holiday. Yeah, it, I think a lot of us tend to... You wouldn't to... pop down the local pub and have one, would you? No. You'd struggle. You would, wouldn't you? Yes, definitely. It's not something that you would... Yeah, I think they'd look at you. you pop down to your local in your jeans and your... You scrap your t-shirt, sitting, sipping your pina colada. It just doesn't work, does it? No, not really the same. In the rain, yes, Which it not is really today, the same. Yes. Right now, I'm just going to get some ink. Now, I wanted the midnight, but I've got silent night. But I'm sure it's going to work. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to blend my ink, blend it nice and well onto the door, but and I'm just going to take it round the edge. Yes, this is working all right. Round the edge, just of my die cut, just like that, just to give it a little bit of an edge there we go and I'm also I've taken cut out that little piece from the middle and I'm going to do exactly the same on there so you can just see how you can layer these up you can make add in as many or as few layers as you wish so what we've got now is we've got we can create a drop shadow just here there we go just just a little bit can you just see the blue just poking out then we can come in with these mats and layers that we've cut off here and then this one just there and then we're going to go in again with an oval and we're going to put that oh we need a sentiment on there should we put a sentiment on there that would make sense where's my plate there we are we can take the plate so did i get the i didn't get my sentiments out where are my sentiments country lane let's see if we can find the sentiment in here there we are i thought i've got everything out so we're going to put on our relax and be happy so these are absolutely perfect so they're going to oops looking the right way around 
There we go, fit lovely on there. And I'm just going to put my stamp on before I put my magnets on, just so that my magnets don't get in the way of where I want my stamp to be. I wasn't sure how much space the stamp would take up. So take that, pop it up, turn it over. I will go in with the black. I thought about going in with the blue, but no. Do it with, go traditional, go in with the black. Pop that on there. And then that's going to pop you on You weren't here. fibbing, were you, when you said even for the tiniest of stamps, you still love using that platform? Yeah, yeah, always. It just... It just takes, for me, it just takes the stress out. I mm. just don't have to worry about it. And I don't, you know, it, and I think I want to enjoy my crafting. And I've got my platform. It's usually very, very close by on my craft desk. So it's no hassle whatsoever to pick it up. But yeah, I just find it so much easier. So we've cu cut those. We've cut our butterflies. So the only other bit I want to put on here, are, let me just get rid of that. Um, ink off here before it goes all over the card there we go there we are that's better the last thing i want to do is i want to use the um gorgeous perennials in pots so i've already stamped them out now we were talking about this i think yesterday or the other day i would stamp them out then i would cut them before i color them because if you're if you color them i've got the right one there or is it the other one it is that one, I think. If I colour them and then I cut them and say my die slips, all that colouring hard work has gone. It takes two seconds to stamp. So if my die goes, you know, if I don't tape it down properly and it moves in transit, it's not the end of the world if it's I a die look. cut. If it was a coloured die cut and it slipped, I'd be less, I'd be less happy. Mm. Does that make, make Does sense? Does indeed. Yeah. You, so I would always stamp it, then... I cut it. Do you know what I'd like to know in the comments, Corinne? Ooh, I'd would like love to know? to know, seeing as it's a Sarah Signature Masterclass, yep. uh, what everyone's all time favourite Sarah Signature is. Wow, you ask some tricky questions, I don't know. you? No, it's not an easy one. No. You can go with top three or top two if you can't quite split, you can't quite call it. Uh, but Crafters TV over on Facebook, Crafts Companion on YouTube, I'd love to know what is your all time favourite Sarah Signature. And what would make it even more interesting, you don't have to answer this, is why yes which mm. what is it which one what why? is it about that collection that makes it stand out mine would probably be rose gold well i don't know that mm. one that's pre my time it's about uh, about two and a half years old two years old all right um yes i loved it i don't know why i just loved it, it was all rose gold as you might imagine <laughs> but all very much sort of pinks and golds and was very very beautiful oh was it? oh no i really really don't know that one at all what about you guys in the gallery The one with the wax seal kit. Vintage diary for George. That's a good one. George with the joystick. Uh, Jamie. He likes the dragonflies. The dragonflies. There you are. Yes. Nice. Is Erin still in the gallery? What's Erin's favourite? Butterflies. Nice. Okay. Rachel, our social media superstar. Uh, hers is Garden of Love and Masquerade Ball. <gasps> oh. Going to have to disqualify Masquerade Ball on a technicality. It's not actually a Sarah Signature it's collection. Not. It's, it's a, a standalone one. But uh, Anita says it's, a, it's an impossible question. I mean, it's not impossible. Yeah. Maybe it I is. actually had to go out and buy a new storage unit the other day. Did just you? Just for my signature collections. Wow. Mm. Because they get the 12 by 12 paper pads in them. So all, all my sort of standalone um, paper, 12 by 12 paper pads are stood up in, yeah. I've got like a cuboid mm. storage unit. And they can stand up like that, that's fine. But I wanted to keep the 12 by 12 paper pads with when they're like Sarah signatures, I wanted to keep them together. Right. You can imagine, so it's got everything together. And they wouldn't fit in any of the boxes that I've got. So I actually went out and Good excuse to buy some new storage. Yeah. Bought some nice new storage. But look how much fun well, you know, we've done lots of colouring, we've shown you how to do all of your your blending, but just come along with your colours. Just add in your extra extra detail just along there. Yeah. I don't know if my husband spotted it yet, actually. He doesn't venture too far. He usually just sort of comes as far as the door. Right, and that's room. it. Is he not allowed in? Oh, yeah, he's allowed in. I just think he gets scared because it's rather full. 
<laughs> I think he thinks if he comes in too far, he might not be, might never find his. You're going to give him a out. job if he gets too close. He might what? Sorry. He might give him a job if he gets too oh, too close. In. Yeah. He knows that all the time. If he, if I see him sitting idle, he might get a job. He might, <laughs> might always. But I'm going to, just to show you how you can do that, and I'm not going to colour it all, but I just want to show you how we can um, add in dimension. I'm just working out which way around my pen. So, so I've got my grey. So I'm going to just colour in my pot with my grey. Now, if you have, I know I, I repeat it quite a lot, but if you've got the Academy of Colour, um, Leanne was teaching you that all, all things that you want to colour are made up of basic shapes. So she was teaching you how to colour circles, how to colour um, ovals, triangles and everything. And it's all about planning your colouring so that you can, you know, you've got a plan and you know what you're doing. So all I'm doing here is popping down what we call a smooth blend. So that's just one colour and we're just saturating the card with that colour on there. Now when I look at this, this is, I know it's cylindrical, but it's basically, it's just like an, it's, um, well it's, it's a cylinder, isn't it? Mm. So we just take the rules that we have with our cylinder. So all we're going to do is we're going to come in from the side and we're just going to drag the colour across there and then where it's darkest we'll come round here. And then we're going to come round the side again here. Now remember, with the alcohol pens, it will dry paler. So I've got my second colour down, and then I'm going to go with my third colour. So remember, again, with alcohol pens, the um, paler colours bleach out the darker colours. So that's why I went lightest colour, middle colour, and then the rest. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of shadow around the edges. And you can see straight away, I can come in. Now, I'm not going to go over that darker colour, I'm just going to go up to it, just repeating that down there so it's not a true preserved highlight in the center because i've gone over it with oh, it's the darkest i wanted the lightest i've gone over it with my lightest gray but i'm just putting there now look at that straight away can you see that looks yep. curved really dimensional it isn't it really isn't difficult to add dimension and curve to you know to shape to your um, shape so we can just come around and then I'm actually just going to come round the edge, just there, and round there. So we've just got that shape. And then I come down the bottom, all the way down, all the way, and then just work out where you think it's going to need a little bit more dimension. So just drag the colour towards the centre and on here, just there, all the way round. Just leaving that little bit in the middle, less each time. So I'm getting darker and doing less of oh, less colouring along there, and then I'm just going to do those. There we go. And then the palest one, just to blend them all together. And then how about like? Oh, I've just missed the colour off the top. Let's give the flowers a little bit of colour. So we'll start with the palest one, just along there. I actually haven't put this on to a piece of card when I'm colouring, which I normally do, but it should be okay because only, it's only quite small. A little bit of darker colour at the bottom, middle one just to there, and then I'll go in with my palest one just to blend it out. There we go. And how about like that? So Beautiful. You can already, how gorgeous is that? What and it flowers really do we think these are? Long, but you can see the shape. I would do exactly the same. What, what flowers do you think these are? What are they? They are tulips. No, they are the ones that come out at Christmas. Hyacinths. Hyacinths. Hyacinth bouquet of the like house. Not bouquet. Mrs. Bucket. Not Mrs. Bucket. But there you go. That's a rose. And Amazing. That that's a rose. And that's okay. a rose. Okay. Right, so let's put this all together, shall we? Sorry, I missed what you asked me when you that's said right. that. Completely missed. Right, there we go. So I've got my card, so we can do it. I'm, I'm going to go tenfold again. Look at this paper. I love this paper with the linen effect. You can put that on there. I would say it definitely... Um, yeah, I think it's a hyacinth. It looks like a hyacinth mm. to me. I'm not very green-fingered. I don't really uh, know my plants and flowers very well. Have you been watching... Are you, are you, do you like your garden, Corinne? I like to sit in the garden, yes. Right, <laughs> sit in it, right. Colin does the, uh, the tending of the garden. Yeah, he, it's get, been he, gets, he gets twitchy when I, when I 
stop gardening. It's been the Royal Chelsea Flower Show, hasn't it, it over has. the last sort of week or so. We keep uh, promising ourselves that we're going to go. It's one of those ones that we really want to keep, yeah. keep saying. Uh, we're Jamie, going to our do. producer's mum, went and met Monty Don. <gasps> Wow. Yeah, there that you are. Be. I saw the Queen was there as well, wasn't she, at the Chelsea Flower Show, which was a yeah, lovely she treat. Had She's a been little, out and about, hasn't she, quite a bit recently. She had a little, um, what do you call it? A little buggy. Like golf buggy. Yeah. Right, so some of the lace that we've got in the collection, we're just going to wrap around a piece of card. Yeah, every year when it comes on, my husband and I always say, we, we, would, we always say we're going to go to to Chelsea Flower Show and then we, we, always, we always forget in between and then it comes on and we go, we were going to go. Yeah. I was like that for years with Glastonbury before I went for the first time. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Adam, is, uh, is, uh, has had gardens at the Royal, uh, the Royal Chelsea, is it Royal Chelsea Gardens? It Chelsea? is. Yeah, um, yes, but I've still never been and looked at them or seen them. But it's apparently it's modernising uh, the Chelsea Flower Show and there's a lot of smaller gardens now and pla uh, pop based gardens oh right not, not, yeah as in they in pots the gardens rather than being <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're not grown yeah you get what i'm going don't you they're, they're in pots is what i mean just stop stop <laughs> yeah you're digging you're digging a hole there and you're just keeping going. i really am I, I was going to try and explain it a bit more and i thought no just move on move on right so i'm going to drop that down to sort of into the bottom section and then we're going to take our gorgeous frames we're going to start building these up right where's my little piece of um, card so i'm going to go back in with my dotty pen and we're going to come across here all the way across right and this is going to go with a drop shadow so you can either drop shadow to the left or to the right i always drop shadow to the left don't ask me why it just always feels right it's there it really we go. does oh, finish just, it off doesn't it there always it's always the way i do do these do you always do it to the same side does it always yes, go I mean, to the left I always drop shadow to the left strange isn't it yeah just feels like the right thing to do and i don't know i really have no no logic to that there we go so that's going to go Nettie new thinks that there might be a peace lily in your uh, in your pot peace lily mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it is. It can be whatever you want it to it be. It can, and that's a great thing with having your pens is you can colour it whatever you like. Lots of people still letting me know what their favourite Sarah signature is as well. Keep or getting them into me. Can you tell which is coming out top? Mm, it's, a bit, it's a bit mixed bag at the moment. I'll, I'll go through a few after this demo. Okay. So we're just going to build up the layers just on there. And we can build these up. These papers, like we were saying, are so pretty, aren't they? I think this is one of those paper pads that you're just going to keep turning to time and time again. It's just going to keep coming out and uh, and being a go-to. Yeah, worth paper saying pad. as well, Corinne. They are, everything is available individually as well. So if you did want to add an extra oh, of any of the paper pad or, or the uh, vellum or the foam pads into your basket, you absolutely can do that at the moment. We do have it, all the extras still in stock. All your consumables, because it's mm. going to be the worst thing, isn't it, if they start to run out before you've finished um, finished using them, you know, you, when you still want to add in bits. So look at this, we're just literally just piling these up and then we've got the last layer. How dimensional is this? I think it's absolutely beautiful. All from that very, very simple frame. We can then put, oops, that's not very centred, is it? Let's try again. There we go, that's a bit better. Put foam pad in the centre of that. There we go, we can put that on there. Then we can bring our shape now. I'm just going to, to help to increase that look of shape we're just bending it down the middle you don't have to get your ball tools out all the time to do shaping sometimes you can just use your hands so we can then grab my glue gel i think i'm going to need to fill this up i'm going to pop this one on first put that on there it's Please. quite refined this collection isn't it it is oh, grab the tube of glue it run out in the syringe there we go. Craig uses a pokey tool to put his glue on. I've never, I've never seen anyone else do that, have you? I have, yes, but 
Yeah, my friend Dawn always does it that way as well. It just depends, doesn't it? I think different people, different people, different ways. Let's grab that. There we go. Just all the way around the edge. Just a little bit of blue, and I haven't even got my ink pad out. Just the ink that was left over on the dauber is enough for that. Wendy is in agreement with you. She says the plant in the pot looks like a grape hyacinth. Yes. And I said hyacinth, I, I, I can't, and my garden is not good enough to go species. The only other thing I've grown successfully uh, is when I lived in the cottage in Peterborough, I had ornamental purple plums. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what an ornamental purple plum looks like. Like a very small purple plum. So it's a tree? Sorry? It was a tree. a tree, yeah. They're not very nice. You can't eat them. Can't you? They all drop off onto the uh, grass and then they rot okay. and it causes the lawn to die. So I'd have to put a big blanket down and shake the bush so my ornamental purple so plums dropped like off so I could scoop them up and put them in a the bin, like yeah. A bit like you collecting olives, really. Sorry? You a bit like, like collecting, collecting olives, olives. yeah, but yeah. less delicious. <laughs> There you go. Well, this is delicious. How about that? How pretty is that? Just that lovely white contrast with all of those elements. With the drop shadow, we've just got the blue butterfly under there. You've got your sentiment. Everything on there is contained from within this collection. Amazing. Absolutely. The things we learn about you through the course of a day. Sorry? The things we learn about you through the course of a single day. If you were going to be a plum, you wouldn't want to be an ornamental one, would you? Like, how pointless to be a piece of fruit that's ornamental. <laughs> yeah. John, John wants to know about, on about my ornamental purple plums when I lived in uh, Peterborough. <laughs> Let me take you back through the collection then. Here's the 12 by 12 papers that you've got just here. Uh, really gorgeous. No ornamental purple plums in here. Lots of other beautiful flowers though there which is absolutely glorious. So you're going to get that in there. You are also going to receive this in the 6 by 6 size too, which is excellent. And the 6 by 6 size is uh, resized too, so you get the full image just in that smaller size, which is glorious. Thank you, John. Look, isn't he good? He just bought us a cup of coffee. Oh, Keeping us going. All we can, because Jake just doesn't bring us cups of tea. You're going to have to get it written into his contract, John. Mm. We need cups of tea during the day at the weekend. They just don't... Well, he's a, he's, a, he's a daddy now. He's, you know, he's knackered, knackered bless him. He's not hard to get any sleep. He comes to work for a rest these days. <laughs> yeah, it's the Crocs he wears as well. I think they sort of slow him down a bit backstage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a really strange mood. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, right, let's... <laughs> Let's, how about you just talk about the product, Joe? Right, OK, let me just take you through these vellums here as well. So let's have a little look at these. Absolutely beautiful. They match wonderfully all of the designs there in your paper pads, which is wonderful. They come in this wallet as well. It's really handy. Keep them in there. But it's going to keep them all nice and pristine. Stop them getting dogged. You've then got your linen cardstock. So 20 sheets there of the linen cardstock. You've got your flower forming foam, which is that one there. And that comes with a uh, with all of your different stamens. Talking about, we were talking about our love of the Scouse accent earlier, weren't we? Uh, over breakfast, Corinne. Yeah. Uh, and I used to remember when I started working in craft, I couldn't say flower forming foam unless I said it in a Scouse accent. Yeah. That was the only way. So in my head, I'd say flower forming foam. That was the only way I could do it. <laughs> Ah, uh, flower forming fame. And then if I did that in my head, I got it in the right order. You almost went female. Sorry? You almost went female. I know, I know. Flower wow. forming fame. I've uh, never heard that accent from you before <laughs> like that. Right, dusk till dawn uh, is this one. Oh, hello, just here, which is brilliant. So you're going to get that included. You're then getting as well your ribbons in there. You're also going to get the lace as well, which is glorious. We've then got your uh, country lace which is the wonderful edible you've got some beautiful decorative butterflies so ornate those ones we then have your lace frame this one here light up the lane do you know what i've realized this reminds me of have you watched la la land yeah. you know when they dance around the lamppost in la yes. la land in beverly in uh, in the hollywood hills that's what it reminds me of it's a bit Singing in the Rain-esque too, yeah. A hanging sign and vines. I went to see Singing in the Rain in the West End. Uh, we sat in the front row, got absolutely soaked. It's like a splash zone. It honestly was. It was like being back in SeaWorld. Uh, sorry? You're surprised. Whoa! You went to see Singing in the Rain. What did you expect? Didn't you, you don't expect to get wet when you go to the theatre. It was theatre. 
you know, I didn't think it was going to be immersive production of Singing in the Rain. Uh, this one here is a cottage window, uh, as you can see there. Uh, you know, it'd be like going to see Bat Out Hell and you're getting driven around on a motorbike. You just don't expect it, do you? This one here was Carbon Gateway, uh, which is beautiful. You've then got the idyllic meadow there as well. Then we move into the embossing photo. The emboss on this one, it's the Grand Oak, is so incredibly deep. Can you see how amazing that is? got so much texture on that you've then got your gateway to the courtyard this next one here is the perfect peony you've also got your perennials in pots which you just saw Corin using and you've got all your sentiments in there as well. I mean, it really is uh, an amazing collection. £155.80, $197.90. That's with a saving added of £52 or $66, which is excellent. Right, so we are going to take a short pause. I'll give you an opportunity to check out your basket. It's super busy over on the website. So whilst we do that, why don't we share with you some of the fun stuff we like to get up to here at Crafters TV. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Quiet. Oh, the neighbors. I'm all out of Zoom. I'm so lost without you. I'm not, I'm not singing. I'm not singing. Lisa, if you email in, don't send a picture of your air fryer. Make sure it's something creative. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like, um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. Joy, there's not a dry eye in the studio here. <laughs> Debbie's welling up, I'm welling up. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV, create every day. Quick buy, all your crafting must-haves in a flash. Take all the hard work out of patchwork with the Gemini Build-A-Block Patchwork System. This innovative collection of multimedia dies allows you to create patchwork blocks with ease and total accuracy. This set includes 18 dies to cut a range of shapes and sizes for patchwork or quilting projects. They can cut multiple layers of fabric at once. They include an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, plus all of your pieces are cut exactly the same size every time. Follow your own creative inspiration or look through the 20 patterns laid out in the guide. Not enough? There's an additional 60 patterns online. And right now, we have amazing offers on the Gemini Build-A-Block patchwork system. Quick buy, get yours now. Right, the people have spoken, Corinne, about what their favourite signature collections are. Chrissy Mahoney, she, like me, says rose gold, it's so glittery and rose goldy. Absolutely, it is. Uh, Panny's favourite is Vintage Diaries, uh, uh, same as George. Uh, Anita says, I love the papers and vellum from the Lily collection. I don't have the whole collection, but the papers are gorgeous. I remember the Lily collection, it was just around the time I started. So it was All like right. the beginning of 2020, um, was very, very popular. Uh, Trisha, oh, she's given me a very comprehensive list and good reasoning why. Okay. She says, vintage butterflies, just fabulous. Who doesn't love a butterfly? And they cover a multitude of sins. Yeah. We're going to go through that collection in a moment. Enchanted dreams, because the beautiful paper pads and the dies are wonderful. Uh, Letters from the Heart, I love the typewriter and the lovely colours on the paper pad. Christmas favourite is Glistening Snowflake, still have a lot less. I absolutely love it. Mm. Um, Pammy, you talking about storing your signature collections. She says, I keep my Sarah signatures in a TT album case, totally Tiffany album case. Everything fits in one, including to the two 12 by 12 pads. <gasps> It's a good I'll idea. Look. I'll have to have a look at that. Uh, Jennifer says Rose Gold was probably my first full Sarah signature. I only use the Happy Birthday die from that collection all the time. Nativity is my favourite nature's garden because it's so comprehensive and I make 48 cards each year with it. Same design for the 48 but different design each year oh, for wow. 10 years. 
Wow, that's amazing. Um, who else? Vintage Lace for Rosalind. I also love So Lovely. And The Peacock. Eve B has mentioned one here that I've never heard of. Black and Gold. Nope. Not heard of that one before. Must be before my time. Uh, and Love's Enchanted Christmas as well. Uh, yes. Keep letting me know what your favourites are over in the comments. We're going to move on, though, and we're going to have a look at some schmedlings. Uh, it is, of course, our vintage butterflies. You guys, another one that you guys absolutely adored when we launched it. You just can't have too many butterflies, can you? you? Can't. Let's face it. I think this one must have launched around when I started. Right. I think we were just doing launches and things end of February, very beginning of March, just as I joined. So this was like my first introduction. So I think there's a very special place for this one for me because it was, you know, the first introduction I got to what a Sara signature collection really can look like. And they're what? just beautiful, aren't they? I love the almost sort of craft card-esque background that you've got that runs all the way through this. Well, I funny think... you should say that because we're going to demo that next and I'm going to mix it with a lot of craft card. Amazing. That's awesome. So you're going to get the 12 by 12. You will get the 6 by 6 as well uh, in there. You are then getting the beautiful vellums as well. Let me take you through these again. They are absolutely... Uh, so what is it with the vellums? It seems that no matter what way... <laughs> no matter what way I start off with these, I always end up with them upside, upside down. down, don't I? Right, there we go. I think we're good. Let's try that again. There we I don't know why you have I'm to do it. Such a pro, thing. aren't I? <laughs> there we are. No, they're the right way around. I thought they were still upside down, they but you are. can see they're all beautiful. the gorgeous design. Really lovely thick vellum that you're getting in there. You then have as well your um, luxury cardstock, which is amazing. So you've got some really gorgeous shades in that. Particularly, love that sort of lilac-y purple colour. We're going to use beautiful? that as well. Sorry? We're going to use that as well. Oh, all of my favourite things coming up in this demo. I'm very excited. Let me share with you then the rest of what you are getting in here. So next up, you have got your uh, lovely embossing folder. But this embossing folder just here, this is your in-flight that you can see there. Really gorgeous deep emboss on that particular one. You've then got the opulent frames. These are great, three different layers there for you to play around with. This one I love because it works really wonderful with the collection because you've got the marvelous Mariposa and you've got that butterfly with a liftable element in the middle. However, what you can actually do is see here, the this sort of edge that you've got and the line in between, they are two separate dies. So you can actually just use that as a beautiful sort of stamped border. You could take a lovely picture of me in portrait mode Create the outside edge and pop that in the middle. You always would, to be honest, didn't you? I've always, do you know what? It's the one thing in life that I always think to myself every day when I wake up is, if only I was a stamp. <laughs> uh, opulent edge is this one uh, just here. <laughs> it was a, I, I'm, no, I'm just going to leave it there. It's a really funny. I went to see a comedian. <laughs> I'm just going to move on. This one is a perfect papillon just here, a really stunning one. Uh, three different dies here all build up and give you this really lovely finished effect. This one's very clever as well. Really lovely big stamp. You're going to enjoy colouring this. But then you've got the sort of leading edge for either the left side or the right side, which is great. This one here is your butterfly kisses. So all of your sentiments all curated precisely for this collection. These are your beautiful butterflies. Now, if you've got your... Um, pigment ink pads. You're going to love creating backgrounds yeah. with those. Really, really lovely. Kaleidoscope is this one here. It's a double-sided one. You will need to use your double-sided die, uh, your double-sided plates, but you will be able to create something awesome in just one pass. Uh, and then you've got your tags and tickets. These are brilliant for so many different things. A lovely saving on this for you. £71 or $88 is what we've knocked off of this today. £132.48 or £164.51 is an amazing collection. It reminded me of a story that Russell Howard uh, told about the Queen when I went to see him in stand-up. He said, do you ever think the Queen lays in bed sometimes, turns on her side, pulls a cover up and goes, oh, look, Philip, I'm a stamp. <laughs> And now we're thinking about stamps. It always makes me laugh. <laughs> we're all feeling very royal, aren't we? We are. It's the jubilee. So it's Thursday is the actual jubilee. It's the actual jubilee. It's the so. anniversary, isn't it? That's when we're going to have the big parade, I yep. believe. Which our Rebecca, our she Becca, is, is going to be in it. She is a giant puppet in the she parade. Is. Yes. Yeah, go and have a look over on our social media, uh, Rebecca Redican CC uh, on yep. Instagram and Facebook. And then Friday's the big concert, isn't it? I'm not. I'm actually going to be at a 
festival on Friday, so I hope I get to watch it back because it's a who's who of uh, amazing acts yeah. on Friday too. So yeah. and I don't know what happens for the rest of the weekend. I'm not no, quite no, sure. I think Sunday's all about the garden parties, isn't it? Sunday's so. garden parties is because the village that the house is in, we're staying here, the main road's closed, isn't it? For yes. A, for a street party. A street party. On Sunday. It's going to be a glorious weekend It here, is. Let's hope the weather holds out. Let's Fingers hope. crossed. There is quite a lot of rain in the forecast. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of wet cucumber sandwiches and volivants at this I rate. remember the Silver Jubilee. That's a long time ago. I remember Sorry? that one. I remember the Silver the Jubilee. Golden Jubilee, I went to central London. Uh, my Silver dad took Jubilee a... was 1977, Silver, I think. Something 77. like that. 70-odd. 70, 70 yes. How does it go? Silver, gold, gold. diamond... Oh, yes, We're missing we some. Silver, there must be some more in there. We'll work there it out. Silver, ruby, gold. The 20, one that was 20 years ago, my dad took us central London. We stood on the Strand and we saw the that Queen was, come past. That was past the golden. That in, the was golden 50, yeah. uh, in, the, in her golden carriage. I say I saw her come past. I actually saw her through two pieces of glass because we were on a corner in a side street and looking through one shop window, out the other shop window <laughs> and then up onto the main road. But I did see her. She got, I think she it. waved at me. I do. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's get on with the next demonstration shall we could okay. just stand and chat all day couldn't we we could we could right so we're going to use the perfect papillon i think is the right one so this is the gorgeous um butterfly so this one as we were saying comes in three layers and each of these layers can be used independently or they can be used together so i've taken some of the card back the purple card and i've created a five by six and a half inch card don't ask me why i did that i just it just seemed to look the right size. Now, I'm going to partially cut this die. So if you look, I've, what I've done is I've centered that down the middle of my card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it onto the cutting plate down that center spine. So only this piece is on the plate. Now I can take this down nice and firmly because this is going to be my waist. So when I next put my next plates on, if we put these on here, and put those, let me line them up, get them nice and straight. So if you can see, can you see there, look, half the die is in the plate, is under here, and half the die is out of the plate. Indeed. And you can't do, a die can't cut if it's not got any pressure. So this right. piece is not going to cut. This is and a good trick if you ever want, you know, a partial cut then on a die. Lot, I bet you could do this with a lot of different dies. You could do what, what? You could do this with lots of different oh, dies. I, I do partially cut some quite a lot. I love doing it with circles and getting partially mm. cut or have uh, dies going into circles, create apertures. It's, it just, I just Amazing. love the effect. So what you can do on there now is we take this off here. Take this off. So when we cut, there we are. So can you see we have partially That's cut. That's really cool. There. Now you could do this two ways. You could just fold this back. If, if you wanted to make it a little bit stronger, you could just fold fold it back on the line. Where am I? Perhaps you need to score it first. But you could fold it back just to there. Oh, I've done that. Pretty, that was a pretty good estimate of the halfway point. There we go. Just line that up. There we are. Look at that. I got those plates exactly on the half. Amazing. In the middle. There we go. So you can pop that there. So that's going to be a bit stronger if you wanted. Oops, I'm losing my antennae. So there we go, so we've got the partial cut. Now, just to make it a little bit stronger, what I'm going to do, let me just check, because this one, oh, perfect fit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this. Now, let's go, I'm going to put these pieces on first. So I've done some mats and layers. So as we were saying about our craft card, I'm going to pop this one just down here. So 77 was the Silver Jubilee. Yes, yeah, 77 was the so Silver So what was 87 and 97? Hang on. No, it wouldn't have been. It Is it every 25 years? 25 years. Then, so you've, then you've got one at 40, and then you've got one at 50. Ah, so it's 25, 40, 50. Yes. Well, you think you'd get one every 10 years, wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't make there, is a, there is an anniversary. It's just people choose not to celebrate them all. Hmm. So I've got that on here. And now, but after I've done that, I'm now going to pop this back on. So I've got the hole, but what you've seen, we've got the over the edge, but it will be a little bit stronger. So that was just cutting it out again, but a little on, you know, a full die cut. So we can then pop that on here. We had a party, I can, I'm trying to remember which ones, because I get, I get muddled in my head. You know how your memories can be a bit, they can play tricks on you. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I, I struggle to remember which one was 
Charles and Diana's wedding and which one was the Silver Jubilee because right. we did things for both. Are they around about the same sort of time? They're very close. They were very close. Right, so then I've got some more of the paper and I've just used some gorgeous gilding flakes around the edges just to add a little bit of colour. But put those two together and then once those two are together, we're going to wrap... Oh, I don't want that one, this one. We're going to wrap some of that gorgeous um, lacy ribbon. This, this one uh, comes on a, on a roll, doesn't it? We get plenty of that. It does indeed. So we can... But you were saying about how well... This works with craft card, doesn't it? Mm. It looks beautiful. I think it's just got a really lovely sort of neutral background across the whole of the paper pad, mm. which is brilliant because it means that you're going to be able to get it to work with neutral tones. Also, they're all there's a pretty good variation on colour of the butterflies as well. So yes. you could pick a certain colour out if you wanted to and, and theme it however you wish. Of course you can, yeah. It'll That's work. very... Is that red liner tape you've got there? Yeah. That's a really wide one. That is one inch, nearly one inch. So I think it's 20... 20 mil, wow. I don't remember. I've not seen one that thick before. Mm. Don't know. Don't know. I've just always had it. <laughs> there we go. You, it's, it's nearly time for you to go home, Joe. <laughs> right. I'm going to actually take that off and use that to help me with my positioning. We can take that off. And then we can come down the edge here. A bit sticking out there we go and that's going to go just down there now as soon as I fold it over on the one then I was prepping it at home I actually cut this off but I'm going to just stick this down because it's going to reinforce my card and make it a little bit stronger there we go so now we've got to this point what we're going to do is we're going to take I've got that one I've got three different card stops here I've got some more craft I've just got some regular white and I've got some of that gorgeous gorgeous vellum and we're going to cut these dies out so let's go back to my big A4 plates and then we can come out so I'm going to do if I go through my layers I'm not going to I've done them with that one so we're going to go through these ones so that is the second layer so we'll do that one in the craft Put that right around. There we go. Then in the white, I'm going to do the effectively the top layer. I can do that. Let's put a piece of tape on just there. This is why it's always good to have a nice large die cutting machine because you can, oops, you can do lots of cutting in one go, can't you? And it just makes life a lot quicker, especially if you're getting a production line going. Yeah, I mean, lots of people own all of our die cutting machines, don't they? A lot of our crafters have got every single one. Yes. Which is quite impressive. You know, you've got one for the job then, for sure. Yeah. I've got my mini. It is my mini. I've got, I've got a mini recently, the Gemini Mini. And I found it so, so useful. It's amazing how many dies mm. will actually go through your Super mini. Super speedy as well, yes. aren't they? Yes, I know. And I've just got it on my desk, and it just means... It's so quick, so quick. Right, so let's get the white one out. The white one's coming out there. Look at that, look at the detail. That is beautiful. It's, it's actually really nice in the white. It's, I mean, you know, you think, oh, you want to do it in a pattern, but actually in the white, it looks lovely. And then we've got the craft. So can you see how it, look at that. Really stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to clean up my plate. I'm going to get my piece of vellum and I'm going to get my detailed one which was that one and I'm going to cut it out of there and I'm going to pick a piece that's got quite a lot of colour in it there we go and then we can layer that one up and cut that through so even though it's a three officially a three layer die we're going to have four layers because we're rebels like that and you because we can so what we're going to do now is going to put that one onto there that one onto there and then we're going to put the white the vellum one on the top so we're talking about when the Jubilees were. Um, Alison said, I remember Brian May playing on the ramparts of Buckingham Palace for the Diamond Jubilee. I think that was the Golden Jubilee, that one, that year, because that was the one I went to, the Golden one. Pretty sure that was the year Brian May was playing yes. his guitar on the roof of the palace. Yes. But the Diamond Jubilee was the one where it rained all weekend. Do you remember there was a flotilla along the Thames? Yes. And I was meant to go. I had tickets to go and sit in a grandstand where the flotilla came along in central London right. with a picnic and, and lots of other lovely things and I ended up working, I had to miss it and it poured with rain all day I remember. 
Well, perhaps somebody was telling you something then. That Absolutely. You... Nothing more royal than a flotilla. I'd like a flotilla to bring me to work every day. Yeah. Mm, I can see the floor. Sorry? In that, I can see the floor in that plan. But there's no river in it. Is there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there isn't. No, and we could build one, I reckon, yeah. Right. You don't think that's a bit extravagant? Just well, to I mean, I'd make do with a narrowboat if I had to, you know. But, you know, you can't On make a couple of choosers. <laughs> yeah, there's a little canal right next to my house. Take me all the way home. Right, I am just literally shaping the corners of my butterfly. And then I'm just layering them up. So I'm even, what I'm actually doing is I'm trying to stick down the antennae as well just otherwise we're going to have a lot of antennae on this butterfly there we go so you can just see it building up just like that now i have one here this is the one we've just cut look at that out of the vellum i love how it cuts beautifully but i've got really one here gorgeous. that i just put a little bit of um gilding flakes on in the center because i thought that would look really gilding pretty. flakes on vellum wow i wouldn't have thought of that mm, you see just you know you can all your techniques that you've got just go for it it's there's no reason why not gosh what a year 2012 was then we had the diamond jubilee and we had the olympics as well in London. yeah yeah i loved that summer yes the olympic summer it was such a great summer wasn't it it was yes i can remember going on holiday and stuff in that summer listening to the olympics on the radio in the car as we were driving on what, sorry? Listening to the radio, the opening ceremony on the, in, on the car, in the car as we were driving. Feels like a strange way to view it, an, an opening ceremony on the radio. <laughs> it worked. A lot of explaining, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Very visual. <laughs> right, I've just put a hole through there. And you remember... No. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you were just... On one today, I've used the sentiments from the collection, and a lot of them are butterfly themed. So, in the world where you can be anything, be kind. I thought that was a nice sentiment, and we're going to put that in the centre of our tag. I'm not sure why you're use... extra funny today, Corinne. I know extra you are. Funny today. You are naughty. You today. are. And we're going to use one of our lovely brads. These brads are beautiful, and then we can pop that on there and then straighten out my brad at the back and how about like that just to show you all the different ways Oop, let's just tuck that under there I want that tucked under come on under there there we go how about like that isn't that absolutely gorgeous I just love the purple with the craft and all those ribbons and the vellums it just looks so pretty really gorgeous absolutely brilliant i love that as well with a half that half cut technique i think is, mm. a, is a really good one i've not seen that I, I may have seen it once before but a long long time ago we're going to recap what you get in the butterflies i'm going to start with the embellishments because i was a silly little sausage earlier and i didn't tell you that you're getting the embellishments included so let's start with those you get the resin brads in here now these are great they've got like little vintage butterfly images on the inside of them which is brilliant you'll also get the elegant lace and this one here which is your butterfly charms and then you're getting all the ribbons in there i'm going to jump up to the 12 by 12 which is this one just here now you get it in the 12 by 12 and you're getting it also remember uh, in the six by six you're going to get both sizes included really beautiful as we said earlier it's got that wonderful sort of craft card style background very neutral then lots of them have got lots of color within the butter i think these particular butterflies are just gorgeous um, loads that you're going to be able to do with this and again do you know what it's one of those things that you could probably give it to anyone uh, relevant of age or it's going to be able to fit and slot nicely into so many of your pre-existing collections also so that's your 12 by 12 and you're going to get it in the 6 by 6 there too then we're going to have a little look here at the vellums next and again the vellum just beautiful what great way of adding texture to your cards you know what i love as well as a vellum insert corinne yeah. really beautiful way to use yeah really beautiful way to use up uh, your um to use or utilize your vellums we've then got your um luxury cards you've got it in the wonderful kind of biscuit cream you've then got it in that wonderful purple the beautiful green and that lovely kind of blush pink coral color there as well. Let's then move into the hardware that you're getting. So you're going to receive this wonderful embossing folder. You get the opulent frames. You're getting that, oh look Pippi, I'm a stamp uh, die there, which is your marvelous mariposa. You've also got the opulent edge in there too. 
Uh, this one here, this is your perfect papillon, uh, which is the wonderful papillon. Which is doesn't a wonderful it sound butterfly. so much prettier? I mean, Papillon. butterfly sounds pretty, but doesn't it sound prettier? Well, I love that they are in. Uh, there's a video as well where they're selling about all the all the languages and how they say butterfly. It's like butterfly, mariposa, or papillon, and then it's schmetterling is the German <laughs> word, which is why I love saying it so much. It may be my favourite word. This one here, you've got the monarch in there, which has then got the lovely big stamp, and then also that little leading edge there, so you can start to play around with your concepts. You've got all of your sentiments in here. Then your background stamps. These are the beautiful butterflies. Make wonderful background papers with those. You've got a double-sided one in here, which is your kaleidoscope. And then you've also got the tags and tickets in there too. Loads and loads of love coming in for that last card as well. Bubble and Squeak says, wow, the vellum works wonderfully. Beautiful card to Shannon. Bubble and Squeak saying, what an absolutely cracking card. Lynn says, I love it. Uh, and I love also the vintage butterflies. And Mary Rhino says, gorgeous card, Corinne. Love the color combination. It really is a stunning card, that one. Now, let me move these out of the way because I want to tell you next about the dancing dragonflies which is amazing so uh, let's have a little look at this collection I think the dragonflies and the butterflies play really nicely together I think the dragonflies the butterflies and also the hummingbird collection whilst they are all different collections they will play nicely together I think it's something down to do with the the colors almost in there but the butter the dragonflies just gorgeous dragonflies if you didn't know signify new beginnings as well which is very interesting um really lovely and i love these sort of lily pads you've got in here again it's quite painterly this one it's always got a little bit of an oriental vibe to it as well i think it would play nicely with something like a chinoiserie collection if you still got some of that then this would go really really well or maybe because the chinoiserie papers are out of stock if you've got the chinoiserie collection and you've run out of the papers this pad is available on its own individually. So if you feel you're not getting the most out of your Chinois collection now you haven't got the papers anymore, how about ordering one of these instead? And that would fit nicely with that. You're going to get it in the 12x12 and the 6x6, which is wonderful. We then have your vellums too. So absolutely gorgeous selection. I love what you said about the vellums as well, putting different things behind them, Corinne. Mm. You get different effects, totally different effects. So I mean, those have got white behind them to give you quite a strong colour. If you put... Um, yeah, I guess if you take the white away, you can see... It really does look quite yeah. different. Really, if really cool. If you put gold behind, it looks completely different again. Okay, it's excellent. Give that a go. Uh, we've then got the foiled cardstock. Foiled, it's got white foiling on it essentially. But what it means it's is very rather clever, isn't it? Really clever. Rather than us giving you cardstock that was, you know, printed and foiled over, what we can do is give you the blank paper, which is perfectly ready. It's got a little bit of iridescence to it as well, both the foiling and the cardstock. And it means then that you can colour coordinate it. Have you want? So you know sometimes you get a pad like this and it's got orange in it or yellow in it you think well I don't ever use orange or yellow so therefore I want, I want six of the blue yeah exactly or I'm never going to use the orange or the yellow or the blue or the purple is going to be the one that goes first it doesn't matter now with this you're not going to be left with any bits behind which I think is a really good idea and when you put your inks over the pearlescent still comes through which I yeah. think is really clever it's really clever uh, this one here is your luxury cardstock what you've got just there and then we're going to move into the other elements. So you've got your little charms on here. You'll get 10 of those. You also get the ribbons. I love the ribbon on here. I don't know what you'd call that style of ribbon, but um, is it a grow grain? Is that what you'd call it? Is it? I can't see. I can't remember. It's got it's sort of a bit of a... It almost looks like... Let me have a look. It looks like the sort of thing that... I don't know. Find it on the like lining of yes, various... it's like you. It, they call it seam binding ribbon. Seam binding is the, is the ribbon. Official term, but yes, it's it is like you grow grain. Yeah, grow grain. Like what you'd find on these sort of inside of very expensive trousers, where around yes. the edges, you know, yes. that kind of feel to it. Then seam you... binding. Exactly. Sorry? What you said, seam binding. Seam binding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've got your water lily frame. Then you've got your dainty dragonfly. This one here is the water lily border. Then you've got your ornate bridge, and that's great. You can make a little sort of opening, small opening card with that one. I love that we've given you sentiments die cut in the smaller size. Not often we see these. Then those, you've got those sentiments can link up. They're really clever. Oh, yeah, really clever. oh so you, you could, could sort of happy birthday. Yeah. Um, well, that's really that's really clever. Then you've got your stamps in there too. This water lily one is glorious. I absolutely love the water lily stamp and die. And then you've got your weeping willow, which is a creator card but then with a stencil to go with it, 
which is awesome. Uh, and then this one here is your lily pond as well, 116.13 or 150.15, saving you 38.71 or 50.05, I believe. We're going to go to Corinne for a demonstration we on this. Ah, Now, it was really strict because obviously I don't show you my demos before we come to the show because just don't show you and it was really strange right at the very beginning when you started talking you said these will all play together mm. and what I'm going to be using is I'm going to use my dancing dragonfly and I'm going to use the little dragonflies from here I'm going to use the water lily borders I use my stamps but I'm going to bring in from my vintage butterfly I'm going to use my opulent frame oh and nice you didn't know that, but that's what that's what's always been planned for this so to you know to mix and match the collection so don't think that when you get your collections home never the twain shall meet you know and, and you can't mix and match them around because of course you can and uh, and it's really nice and you're going to get it's almost like refreshes them sometimes and brings out um, even more elements so I'm just going to poke out these little bits now this is an edge of dye this is your water lily border and it is so so pretty let's make sure all the bits are poked out there we, we uh, investigated that TV show didn't we before the break before the show this morning uh, Corinne I can't remember what the TV show was called now can you oh, no Poldark. not Poldark no. Stumpy oh yes oh that was hilarious that um, was so funny. So one of our viewers said I sounded like a uh, a character from a an old TV show. Uh, I think I've got it. I thought I had it here somewhere, but I don't. Uh, it said I sounded like a character called Stumpy. Was it called Rio Brava or something, yes. the uh, TV show? An old just Western. Do a search, and when you hear Stumpy laugh, yes. it's just like Joe's in the room. Uh, I mean, the guy laughed, and then I laughed because the guy laughed, <laughs> and you didn't know which one, whether it was coming out of my mouth or the phone. It was no, that, it was that uncanny. I can't remember it was said it yesterday, but we had a little investigation. It's, it is uncanny. My right. laugh twin. <laughs> so I've got a piece of card, 12 by 6. So basically, I just got a piece of 12 by 12 and cut it in half so I could make two. Now I'm going to score it at 6 and I'm going to score it at 3. Or oh, score it at 3 and then at 6. I'm just scoring it now just so that I can do a technique. Now, I find when I'm die cutting, there we go, perfect 6 by 6 card. When we're die cutting and you've got a detailed die, if you put it in your plate with this die going across which is how I'd have to do it if I was cutting it into one I don't always get the best cut and I, I want to do it that way and I can't because the card is wider than the plate is long does that make sense yeah, yeah the card yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it like this and I'm going to work out where I want it to go so you can see I've got this six inches is absolutely perfect for this die cut so let's just attach that nice and firmly and what we're going to do is we're going to put that on there and then I'm going to pop it onto my oops I've stuck it onto the plate didn't mean to do that let's put that on there again so I'm just going to cut this twice into my cardstock so I'm going to pop it once on there then I'm going to pop this I'm going to hug it round my metal plate oh okay just like that there we go and so now i've got it coming down but it's only it's still only going to cut into one side of my card because i didn't want it to cut into the other side brilliant so we Top can put tip. that through there this die isn't isn't detailed enough that you need a metal cutting plate but it's not going to do it any harm oh uh, okay yeah you're never going to do any harm by putting your metal cutting plate in so yeah so i just sort of put that on there so that's going to cut my one side in. Let's have a look at how that's done. And if it's put, gone through and made a little bit of a mark in, it really, really won't hurt. So that's now cut into there. So there we go. I can just pop that off. Now that is going to go, I want that to go that way round on my card. There we go. So now I'm going to get the other side and we're going to just clean it off because I want them both to be facing up. So I'm going to pop this one on that side, just on there. And that's going to go there. And then we're just going to pop that often again. Come on, Corinne. There we are. Pop that into there. And then we can cut through like that. And that will cut both sides with my die in the direction that I wanted it to go to get the maximum effect, but it's only going to cut one at a time. Suppose actually, 
I could potentially. No, I couldn't. I didn't. Couldn't do it together because I wanted them. I wanted to be able to cut them both in the same direction, so it wouldn't have worked. I was thinking, could I have cut through the two layers of cardstock in one go? But no, is the answer. Because what I've done is I've cut across there and then across there. Now that hasn't all poked. Oh, they just need poking out. Look, they're coming out. Oh, as I press them, there we go. Just poking those out. Now those bits stay in. Those bits poke out. Where's my pokey tool gone? Uh, in Dutch, butterfly is vlinda. All right. Yeah, vlinda. Do I you bet. speak a lot of languages, or do you just pick up Absolutely odd words? Absolutely not. I just know. I'm fluent in uh, menu in Italian. I can do a ta menu in Italian. That's it. All right. So I can order. Yeah. And I can uh, translate a menu. Right. That's it, really. I can go to a Swedish bakery. I know all the words for all the different various Swedish buns and um, So basically, rolls and you're things. fluent in multiple languages where food's concerned. Only where food is concerned. I'm also very good at saying I can't speak the language. Lo siento solo inglese. Or mi dispiace, mi italiano non è molto buono. I can just say I can't speak the language very well. But then what happens is you say you can't speak the language really well, so people don't believe you that you can't speak the language, and then they answer you in Italian anyway. So you <laughs> may as well just shrug. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it is the one thing that I have to hang my head in shame and say, I don't, I don't do languages. I did my German to O level. Right, I did, uh, well, I do speak a tiny, tiny bit of German, I would say. I did uh, GCSE German for a little while. Yeah, I did the equivalent to a O level, yeah. which is what we, I'm, in the olden days, before GCSEs, we did O levels. Ah, uh -huh, okay. And O level is... Do GCSE still a thing now, or is it something else? Oh, I don't know. Uh. So can you see, look at that, so we've now got beautiful. this. Beautiful. Beautiful into both sides. And the reason I couldn't do it in the same one is because we've cut down on both ways, so, you know, it wanted to go on like that. And then we're going to start adding some mats and layers. Now, what I've also done is I have actually, oh, I've got it here. There we go, let me go through this. I've got a piece of this gorgeous pink, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the back of here. Let's come through here and get our dotty tape pen. So we're just going to go all the way over the edges here. And then I'm just going to make sure that's on there. And then this will go over here so that really is going to make that pop so we can pop that one oops on there just flatten that all nicely down there we go that's going on there look at that really makes that pop nice. now i mean you could even do paper piecing into there if you Lovely. wanted to yeah but then those I've got golden release sheets would be great for that wouldn't they they would but on this side we're going to do it as a drop shadow so we can take that one and let's put the dotty tape pen on the back of here there we go. You can take that and then I'll just put some regular tape pen on the bottom here. There we go, so it sticks nicely. And that's going to go, let's have a look. That's going just on here. And again, just the very slightest of drop shadows. There we go. Oh, I can see one that's not poked out. There we go. Poke those through. Can you see there, look? Can you see the pink just showing through? Really just nice. It really looks pretty, doesn't it? So Any tips for lining that up when you're doing those drop shadows, Corinne? Just take your time. OK. Just take your time. Sometimes you might find, like, a repositionable glue a little bit easier because it gives you a little bit more time. But, yeah, it's just about taking your time so that you don't, don't rush it. Um, and look at it from above. So I've got that gorgeous gold. So I thought I wouldn't stick with the pink all the way through. We would mix and match with the different colours because this is now going to pick out lots of the gold highlights from in that paper. And that's going to go in our card. So, so far we've only used one die from the collection, but we will use more in a minute. We can put this one just here. And what I can see is my cardstock just run shy there so I'm just going to trim that down just to make it look a bit better there we go that's going to look better then we've got another piece of that gorgeous paper 
it's amazing how sparing you, you how sparing you will be with these papers because they are so pretty and you'll keep every last bit sometimes i was doing the craft along yesterday and they opened up my masquerade ball and um, pad and there was all the bits of paper in there that i'd cut away for mm -hmm. doing different demos because you're like nope don't want to lose them don't want to lose them pop that on there and then i've got some more little pieces just on here there we go and it's amazing how you can actually utilize all your little pieces of your cardstock they come they come good and that's going to go making sure i cut it the right way up yep that's going to go just there just line up your pieces it's going to look better i mean how about that so far it's, i know what you mean about that oriental feel about it it definitely has hasn't it i don't know whether mm. it's the water lilies but it has now i have cut myself an oval but what we've also done is using the vintage butterfly i've cut myself the smallest of those in there and i've cut the same one in gold and just cut that in half and we're going to just put that either side so we're actually going to do a dro double drop shadow on this one rather than a single drop shadow and that's going to go on there oh that's a bit too much a bit too much just realized i want a stamp on here and i should have done it before i stuck this up but we'll make it work and that one's going to go on that side there we go then we're going to get one of our sentiments oh and that's going to go just put a little bit, grab it just there. So I like that one. You are strong and you are beautiful. It fits on. Oh, that's really. cute, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? There we go. We can take that. Pick that up. And then. Nice. A lot of people are loving that drop shadow. Bubble and Squeak loved the technique with the metal plate, so that was another clever tip. Bubble and Squeak says, what a beautiful effect, Corinne. Uh, now Thank even you. more beautiful with the pink behind, too. Donna's saying it's beautiful as well. Yeah, it just makes it pop, doesn't it? It really makes it pop. There we go. Even though I've got that little gap in the middle, it's stamped perfectly. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pop it onto um, an oval. go that's going to go on there pop that onto here oh there's my I've got two pokey tools here now one minute I didn't have any and now I've got two bring my card back and we can then so we've tied all the colors together here can you see how we've got the pink the gold and then we've tied them all together in the middle the last little bit I want to do really is beautiful. from this frame you've got different dragonflies but i've got this dragonfly out of the water lily frame cut it in the pink now i have just put some um some sort of um what do you call it little bellamy type bits behind just to give it a little sparkle let's just come down here all the way down that can then go just on there and the final little bit just to put on i think it looks nice just there we're going to pop a little a little bow just down there and how about that just to show you how mix and match your collections together because they all work beautifully and just gel together they do don't they really really gorgeous there uh, let me show you again then what you are getting so you're gonna get the papers in the 12 by 12 and in the 6 by 6 you'll be getting the vellums in there you are also getting the foiled cardstock which you can color up yourself which makes it really versatile then you've got your luxury cardstock you're going to receive your brads in here the grow grain ribbons are coming included the wonderful water lily frame these are your dainty dragonflies. You will also get that water lily border that you've just seen Corin using there. The ornate bridge is this one that is coming included. You've got the simple sentiments.
which are your die cut sentiments. Then you've got your dragonfly dreams, which are your stamp sentiments. You've got the water lily stamp and die in there. You also have the weeping willow, which is that wonderful creator card with matching stencil and also the lily pond 3D embossing folder. Brilliant price for you on all that, 116.13 or 150.15, your price there on all of those. Let me just scooch this out of the way because we are gonna finish with this, which I love. I love this because it's like all of the things that so many of you love about crafting. It's unicorns, rainbows, florals, butterflies, dragonflies, really lovely pretty pinks and purples uh, and greens and golds. You've also got lots of really lovely watercolor effects in here. There's lots of scroll and script for you too. It just is a really great collection. You guys have absolutely loved it. You've got a brilliant saving on it now too. Let me also share with you what you're getting. So you get the 12 by 12 and the six by six in here. You are also getting the flower forming foam in there. You've then got this, the chunky glitter. I'm gonna take it out of this box because it doesn't do it justice whatsoever. Look at how gorgeous that chunky glitter is. I mean, it is absolutely amazing, isn't it? You're getting that included. Then you are also going to receive these, the gilding flakes, the gold gilding flakes, you get the gilding flake glue and the sponge. You're getting the stamens to go with the flower forming items too and the die is in this one i think they are just off the chart they are absolutely gorgeous and you've got lots of dies in here too so let's start with this one the mystical frames love this because you've got look at the layers you've got because the amount of layers you've got in the die means that you've got the ability to build loads of dimensions you've got one two three four five different elements there to that which is brilliant because you can really make them quite small have lots of um large match layers or you can really build it up this one again is brilliant the spell binding borders uh Corey mentioned using this for things like your memory books i mean that could just be the whole front of a book if you wanted to nothing to stop you elongating that either because all of these are disconnected so loads of options this is your fluttering fantasy you've got your flower dyes in here so you've got botanical blooms and beautiful blossom then you've got your magical sentiments there. This one is your whimsical textures. You've got your decorative unicorn. This is your enchanted fairy. She's almost flying, isn't she? I love that. In flight. Then you've got your up, up and away. Your mystical unicorn. Now I've got to have words with people. People have been saying in the comments that you could snip the unicorn's horn off and it would then be a horse. I don't think that's how it works. What do you think, Corinne? I mean, you, you could portray it as a horse. So you're saying then that a unicorn is just a horse with a horn? Probably. I just don't think that, that just doesn't sit right with me. Uh, you've then got your whimsical woodland in here. You've got some wonderful stencils as well. Decorative script, you've got the abstract splash and also the mystical damask in there as well. Right, I know we've got, do you think we've got time to squeeze another demo in, Corinne? We're gonna have a go. Brilliant. We're definitely going to have a go. Okay, right. So we're going to start off by using the gorgeous mystical frames. So there is um, an outside frame, but we're not going to use that on this one. We're going to go straight in with the next one. Look at the detail. Now this is going to cut off the, in the center. So to speed up time, we're going to take the fourth layer. So that's the second. This is the fourth one. And we're going to cut them both at the same time because that's going to use the waste, to cut it out of the waste. So we might as well make the most of that while we can so that's going to go just there and we're going to pop that through here so this is going to go on to our beautiful background look at this look at these papers and how well they go now i think this is from the, oh this is from um it says hint of gold uh, no, it's not. It's the luxury um, 12 by 12 card pack. Brilliant. I love those. We were using that yesterday, weren't we? Because we were mm. using the mat and the, the detail. So let's that cut it all out. I might just run that middle one through again, just because I think it could do with a second cut. Let's just take that off there and that off there and run that through a second time, just because it looks like it could do with another cut. But that's not a problem. We can do that. There we are, run that all the way through and tap this one out of here, get it to come out the frame. I think it's because it's a coated cardstock, it just, it probably was through. Just grab that as that comes out. 
there we are. Right, so just poke out these bits. Because it's got the sort of iridescence on, it's just capturing all of those little bits. They are all cut, and they're all cut beautifully. But I think it's just the coating that gives it that pearlescent finish. It's just holding on to the, to the little bits. There we go. And down here, all the way. Could you cut that with your metal shim if you wanted it to be a bit yeah, easier? Yeah, I suppose you could, yeah. To. Yeah, I think because it's got, you know, it's it's a coated cardstock, mm. sometimes it just... And they are all cut, I can see they're perfectly cut, but I think sometimes some cards have a coating on and it just means that they just hold on to the pieces. Okay, okay. It's not that they're not cut, it's just that they don't always, they don't just pop out. Look at that, that was easily enough done. Amazing. And then, where's my middle one? Oh, that's much better. Looks a lot better. Give it a tap to start to release it. There we are, there's only one or two left on there. There we go. There we are. Now, see, if I can, see how many of those I can get in the bin? A few. So we have our card base, which is it's just with the um, Centura Repel um, hint of gold. And then we've got our encapsulated gold and our gold paper. And then I can show you how this is going to start to look. We can bring that up and put that one onto there. Now, you've got some more layers. So out of this beautiful, I love this one. You were saying about being Sarah's favorite image. Yeah, so she really in, likes that in this collection. So you can pop that one onto there. Then we're going to use this little frame in here. And then I've got the final little piece already cut just to pop on there. So I'm gonna stick those down and then we'll have a look at the mystical unicorn. So I'll just stick those bits down first. If you just Brilliant. Give me a minute. Um, I love the film, it's so gorgeous. I was talking about the last demo that you did. Christine says, Corinne, you make the most beautiful cards. Uh, is the bridge die the same as the bridge in the embossing folder? Now, what collection is that in? That is That's in the butterflies, butterflies, isn't it? Let's have a look. Is it the same or does it just coordinate? I can't remember. No, it's not the butterflies, is it? Is it? Is no, it's it? dragonflies. Uh, they're dra oh, here we go, dragonflies. Dragonflies. Yeah. Is, yeah. One, is the embossing folder the same as the... Mm, no, it's not the same. It's similar, but it's not the same. I'll show you. That, was, that took me longer than it should have to find both yeah. of those in there. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does. Let's just show you. I mean, they would work together, but yeah, they're not the same bridge. It reminds me of the mathematical bridge in Cambridge. Have you seen that? Mathematical bridge? The mathematical bridge. It was a bridge that they built in Cambridge hundreds of years ago, and it was all just slotted on top of each other. It oh, all wow. just slotted into each other, and it was, it was a... No one really knew how they'd built it, so what the university did in its wisdom was they took the bridge apart to see how it was constructed and they couldn't put it back together so they had to bolt it together in the end afterwards. <laughs> what a load of wallies, eh? Mm, I've heard of, of construction wallies. companies like that. Sorry? I said I've heard of construction companies like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, we'll take it apart to see how it's done and then couldn't put it back together again. They should have numbered the pieces as they took them apart, shouldn't they? They should. And they didn't find out. They didn't get to the bottom of how it had been, how it had been done. So the bridge doesn't exist anymore, then? It does, yeah, but it's got bolts in it now to hold it all together. All oh, right. The point was it was just all... It was built in a way that it was just resting on each other. You know how they build, like, the dome oh, of a cathedral? Yes. They did the same with the Duomo in Florence. They... Did some, they, don't, they didn't take it apart, but they actually, it's the biggest unsupported dome in the world, I believe. Right. I could be wrong there. Go to germanmentsfactchecker.com and uh, see if that is the case after the show. Um, no, no they, so they, they still don't know really how it's built and how, it's, how it supports itself. Right. It is a, it's a masterpiece of engineering, apparently. This. It's very clever, isn't it? That, you know, how these things rest. I mean, it's the same with, um, isn't it, St um, no, uh, Royal Albert Hall as well. The, like, the roof on there shouldn't, shouldn't work. Yeah, absolutely it ginormous. Shouldn't work at all. 
but it does somehow. I still can't work out how. I know it's explained to, to you how it works, and, uh, but it just looks like it should fall in, doesn't it? Yeah. I wanted that side. That was too busy, that other side. There we go. And then we're going to pop. That's going to go. Oh. I really like the paper Corinne is using, says Jean. Yes. That is, of course, from this collection, isn't it? It is. It's from the Enchanted collection. Pat says Corinne's demos have been so pretty today. They really have. Do you know what? It's the collections, isn't it? It's the signature collections. Mm. I'd love to say, yeah, yeah, that's all mine doing. But it's not when you've got... I think it's a bit of both, Corinne. When you've got beautiful collections just like this, it is so easy to put together really, really pretty um, demos. So easy. So there we are. We're just building that up just like there. And just to show you, I've also stamped a sentiment and put it on a bit more of the gold. Oh, where's my kiss gone? That's going to go just there. And then we've got our sentiment. Is that my sentiment? Yes. There we go. We can just oh, pick that up and put that on there. Right now, the best bit. We have got our gorgeous, gorgeous unicorn. I've already stamped him out. And what you've then got is you've got the die that's going to cut him out. So we can then pop that through there. Oops, get a little piece of tape. I've got another piece, there we go. I've got it in the right place. There we go. We can do that on our small plates. It's handy, isn't it, having the A4 plates and the A5 plates both on your counter at the same time, because you can yeah. just swap around and... I've never had a die-cutting machine before that had that. I had the ability to do both. That, that's had... Oh, sorry, I knocked it off. It was my fault. <laughs> I, uh, it happens to all of us, isn't it? I like the fact that the plates are quite thin as well. I hope that it's not... I like the fact it's not a really... The sandwich isn't heavy, you know, it's not a big, heavy sandwich. Yeah. Although I do love a big heavy sandwich, just not in the die cutting sense. <laughs> Talking of big heavy sandwiches, I made myself another one of them whacking great cheese and ham sandwiches I had last night. I saw it in the yeah. fridge this morning. And I didn't bring it in. No, is it in the house? It's in the house though, I have to go back and get it, aren't I? You are, aren't you? What a sausage. I thought you were going to say, oh, you've got your lunch for tomorrow, Corinne. No, oh no, <laughs> I'm going You're back for that. Say that. No chance, <laughs> I'm definitely going back for that. <laughs> right, now once we've done this, so this is on our Nina card, and then we can just bring in our pens and colour it in. So, really easy. I'm not even going to go through all the um, techniques that we would normally do for hair for um, if we were doing the humans like we did with the natural beauty. We're just going to colour this in, and we're just going to think on where we would end up with the lighter and the darker bits. I really did think, I thought that that's where that conversation was going. I thought you were going to say, well, your lunch is ready for you tomorrow, Corin. Yeah, it'll probably be a bit dry by tomorrow. It's only in a sandwich bag. It is, isn't it? It'll be a bit stale. Bread wasn't, bread wasn't the, uh, the freshest when I bought it, to be honest. Anyway, enough about my dry bread. <laughs> uh, don't, don't forget. Right. And then just look at where you'd have the darker bits. So we'd have the dark bits behind the ears. We'd have the dark bits coming out from underneath the pieces just there and coming up from there and then right down at the bottom we'd also have some of the darker bits coming on and then maybe a little bit coming through here we're just going to add in a little bit more highlight just there and then all the way round and just bring in those highlights just there there we go, and then we can blend those down and then you're going to get the gorgeous, gorgeous colouring. Now, the great thing is, is things that are white are really easy to colour. So I've just got my um, brown-grey blend. So it's got BG2, BG3 and BG4. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to give the impression of colour. So I'm just going to come round the edge. Corinne, have you got to finish one of this project? I have. Could we... Would you mind if I paused you there? Yeah, of course you can. And we did the vote. Would that be yeah. all right? And then we'll okay. come back and finish it. Is that all right? It's all right. We can show you. So all I do here, look, is you don't colour the whole thing. Oh, let me bring it down a bit. Well, then you'll have, nice, you'll have plenty of time then to finish the demo. Yeah. Can you just see how you just can give the impression 
of white by bringing mm. in your grey. So that's where we're going to. Right, cool. let me grab all my demos then. Well, it's going to be very difficult. I have a feeling you might win card of the day again today, you Do know. Do you think so? I think we'll get this when might. we're the you only You were very in. close to winning card of the week yesterday, maybe this week. Yeah. you've got card of the month, so all isn't lost. It's not. Okay, where did we start? We started with our... You've got a 100% strike rate on card of the month, by the way. One card of the week win, one card of the month win. Look at that. That's pretty impressive. It is. Okay, so garden party first is number one. Brilliant. Uh, then I think we went country lane was number two. This is putting me. This is testing me on my Sarah signature <laughs> collection. Country Lane number two. Then I think we did Vintage Butterfly was number three. Let me bring that in there. Oh, there's Vintage Butterfly. Then we did the Dancing Dragonflies for number four. And then we are going to try and get this finished. And we've got our Enchanted Dreams for number five. Amazing. What five incredible cards there in a two hour show. It really, really is. Get your votes in then. One, two, three, four, or five. Uh, and we will choose the card of the day. But we'll go back to lovely Corinne for the rest of that demo. Yep, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to remember. So when you say which one it is. <laughs> That's the go. thing then, remember. And they say, oh, numbers, number is this one. You think, oh gosh, what was that? <laughs> okay, so just to finish showing you what you're doing. So all we're going to do is we're just going to imply in the colour here. So starting with the lightest one, and we're just going to bring it down just here so you've seen how it's going to look when we finish and then i'm just going to bring it out from underneath his mane and then it's going to be obviously darker under his chin and then round here and then maybe just a little bit round his muzzle just bring it round here and it's so easy to do then we can just bring it down in the right sort of just nice little straight lines we're not doing too much so we just bring that down you can commit this is my lightest one so i need to remember to come in far enough or that i'm not going to have enough room for the others so come in with my second color and then just blend that in remember you go lightest to darkest because if you your dark, lighter colors will bleach your darker colors so we just need to add in that dark color just around there and then i can just come in just up the edge and back down so we've still got some white on there and the same on his ears just down there and then we're going to go in can the you have female unicorns or are they all are they all male that's all i know well i would hope this females otherwise they're going to run out aren't they are those how do the, they the make each other the popular uh, did you hear that I did. jamie just says how well how do they make each other uh, i think he means how do they Reproduce. procreate yeah <laughs> the circle how do they is how do they recreate? I don't know. How do they make reproduce, each other? Reproduce. 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 Thank you, Corinne. Thank you. <laughs> how do they make each other? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. And then we can just come down here. And so can you just see, we're just dragging that colour in, but we don't have to colour the whole thing. And just and also what we always keep reminding you is your inks will dry paler. So you're just going to bring that in. I'm just going to bring that again breaking it down into parts just looking at each section at a time just to add in there now we are rapidly running out of time so you just carry on that principle can you just see that principle until you've got to there which is absolutely gorgeous and you really can this really is achievable and then we can pop that onto the front of our card just there and i also had a few little gems just to put on and then this one will look like the one that you saw for the vote. So we can put those on. These work really well, don't they, with that um, encapsulated gold card. Mm. It's just like, just like the card, but in gem form. So let's just put a gorgeous unicorn, just a little bit of glue. Now, the great thing about doing the glue gel is what we can do is, can you see we've got different heights? Yep. So if we just put the glue gel in, it's like a self-leveller. We can put that on and then it just levels out to the height that you want. Brilliant. Which I think is fantastic. So there we go, our enchanted dreams with our unicorn. Brilliant. Awesome. And card of the show is number four, Corinne. Number four. It just pipped number three. So was that be our... I believe so. Dancing butterfly, uh, dragonflies. Absolutely it was. Oh, indeed. I'm, glad you liked it. I'm just going to really quickly recap what you're going to get then in this collection. Remember, you're getting the 12x12 12 12 and the 6x6 6 6 paper pad. You will get the flower forming foam, those beautiful stamens, 
ones, the gilding wax and that chunky glitter in there. And I'm just gonna switch this out and share with you what you're getting with the rest of the collection. So you've got the wonderful mystical frames, the spellbinding borders. It's a big collection, this for the money. Fluttering fantasy. Uh, the botanical blooms, you've got the beautiful blossom, There's lots of stamps in here as well. You've got the magical sentiments and the whimsical textures. You've got the decorative unicorn, you'll get the enchanted fairy, the up, up and away, mystical unicorn. You have got the 3D effect whimsical woodland folder and then you've got your stencils in there as well. Make sure you join myself and Corinne back here in two hours time. Monday Makers, which is amazing uh, because loads in that show. We've got those chalkboard stamps along with a whole host of other stuff. And tomorrow, Be Creative will be here all day. Because I know you're super excited about that, Corinne, aren't you? We are. We can't wait. Yes, myself and Ben with um, Gordon and Justin. So Brilliant. It's going to be a great day. Make sure you come and join the guys tomorrow for that. Don't forget to check out your baskets. And I will see you back here uh, in about an hour's time. Don't forget about that Memorial Day sale happening until the end of tomorrow. Over on the website, you can get 75% off. See you soon. Bye.